Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday Notary Titans. Today is Tuesday, March 5th. And thank you guys all for being here. If you are able to have your cameras on, we would love to see your gorgeous faces. Um, I am here with the one and only Laura Bewer. Hi, Laura. Good afternoon. How's it going for you this morning, Jen? Good? You know, it's been a great day. It's gorgeous outside. Had my beautiful walk. Uh, feeling very pumped up and happy to be on the call today. Uh, I want to start off, Laura, if you don't mind, by talking about a couple of events that are happening yeah. uh, coming up here this week, um, one of which I'm going to post um, in just a few minutes, uh, which is the California League of Independent Notaries calls happening on Thursday. You're going to get that link from me here in just a minute. But first, I want to talk to you about the Notary Influencer of the Year Award. We are looking for nominations for Bill Soroka. So if you have not nominated him, please do so. I also want to remind you about the upcoming NNA conference. And um, Notary Toastmasters is happening on Thursday this week. If you have ever said to yourself, I need to work on my confidence speaking in front of a group, like a networking group, um, even, you know, when you're going to lunch and meeting different professionals, if you're a new CNTDA, Certified Notary Trust Delivery Agent, and you're looking to build your conversation skills, Toastmasters is an amazing program. And check out the chat. The links are in there. If you want to get signed up for it, you are going to learn not only confidence, uh, but some amazing uh, tricks to help you become a fabulous speaker. Um, all right, you guys know how this works. This is like an old fashioned radio call-in show. Laura and I are here to answer your questions. No questions off limits. All you have to do is raise your virtual hand and you will find that at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Um, if you, it's either going to be available to you when you go to the bottom of your Zoom screen. If you don't see it, if you're having trouble locating it, click the more button. You'll see three little dots with the word more underneath it. Um, when you open that up, it's going to help you see uh, the um, the raise hand function. So if you want to get in line to have your question answered, oh, Laura's got a question. Yeah, you know, I see Matt's on the line and it might be helpful to let him co-host so he can help put posts, put links for us. Uh, that would be great. Trisha, if you could make Matt a co-host, we would sure appreciate it. Um, and Matt, you have access to our links. We're going to be talking about your call here in just a moment as well. But I see Ev Sharp from California has a question for us. Hey, Ev, what's your question? I, I got a bunch. I'll just keep getting back in line. That's fine. Hi. Uh, the most important one to me right now is on a right to cancel that I'm signing shortly. Um, it has first name individually and this trust, yada, 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 and second name. Can I cross out that second name and have them initial? Because the second one isn't there? Well, the second one is on their own page. It's, I'm sorry, I'm not understanding what you're trying to communicate. Okay. Right to cancel. At the bottom, there's two separate ones, one for each signer. Okay. On both of them, they have first signer and second signer, or second signer and second signer. Can I cross out that second signer? Is that clear? Well, I wouldn't cross it off. I mean, if it's the same person, I, I wouldn't be striking somebody's signature areas, document area. So I wouldn't be striking somebody's name from that. So what you're saying is you've got two signers and you've got, yes. you've got right to cancels that have both signers listed on one piece of paper, right? You have first signer and second signer, you said on the yes. same piece of paper and yes. you've got several of them like that. And then you've got another one that just has second signer only twice. Yes. Okay. Did I get it? Did I describe it correctly? Yes. All right. So there's nothing, there are two signers, two different signers, correct? Yes. But each of these pages only has one signature line. 
I don't know what you mean. A one so, a signature line for each one? One signature line. A oh, one signature lender. line, but you got two different people that are, yes. that are named to sign it. They don't have, uh, and you don't have enough to have individual ones. You don't have enough copies of a right to cancel so that each one can sign three. Well, I made enough copies, but. Okay, so one says John and Mary. There's one place to sign John and Mary. Yeah, okay, I get that. Can now. I cross off Mary? I, you know what? I, I'd be calling them and telling them what the problem is because here's okay. what I understand. If you start striking anything on a right to cancel, it's going to invalidate the right to cancel. They're, they don't okay. want right to cancels with any strikes on it, any mistakes on it. It's not like other documents where I can say, oh, just strike an initial here. Right. Um, what I've been told is don't be messing with that document uh, by, by adding or subtracting names that aren't on there. Uh, instead, uh, call them and tell them what the issue is. Yeah, I tried. I'm not, haven't gotten through yet. Okay, next person. So so hold on. Um, who's the lender? American Airlines Credit Union. Okay. So um, the, I can't believe I actually remember this. The, <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, <I'm good>. going <laughs> so this is, um, so they, okay. So just make sure I got this right. You've got one rescission document that has both of their names. You've got one rescission document that has just his name and one rescission document that has just her name, correct? I do not have one that just has her name, but yes. Is she a non-borrowing spouse? No, she's a borrower. Okay, so then you definitely, you don't have any documentation with just hers on it. That is true. Okay, so you need to call um, and ask them if, because you're going to, he's going to sign it himself. Um, I'm assuming it's still this way. I haven't seen an American Airlines Credit Union one in a while, but their rescission documents always had um, first and second borrower signing one rescission together. And then normally they would follow it up with three for borrower one, three copies for borrower one individually and three copies for a borrower two individually unless it was a non-borrowing spouse and then it would just be borrower number one that would have to sign it individually by himself as well yeah no i try yeah it's not following what you say i did okay. try and get a hold we'll wait and see did you call the lender no i called the person that hired me look at the back of the cd the last page and find out if you can get in touch with the lender because the title company of is they're going to be like, I don't know. Um, they're going to play middleman for you and see if you can reach out directly to the lender to get an answer from them because that's a lender question, not okay. a question. Okay. I'll do that. If there were just blank yeah, lines, it'd be different, but since there's names. Yeah. Don't strike anything on a rescission. Okay. Like, yeah. Did okay. you have a second question you said? Well, get get somebody else first. Okay. All right. Hop back in line. And let's see, we have loan signing agent that is waiting. Who's that? And where are you calling from? Hi, I have to update that. My name is Martha Cherubogam in uh, New York City. And I have an issue that I am fuming over. Okay. Um, my client uh, who I've... Uh, signed already like over seven properties he's an investor works for google in new york you know he's a ultra cool guy he always calls me to do his closings and he's currently uh closing in oregon and he he cc'd me in the email with the escrow assistant to the person the escrow person and said hey martha chiraboga will be doing my closing just giving you a heads up this is her details and uh uh, the, the escrow assistant wrote back, uh, you know, uh, we only use a, a company that's been approved by the underwriters at the title company called Central Signing Service, Inc. It's been approved by the underwriters. Their main number is blah, blah, blah. They're the mobile notary out of Oregon and have notaries nationwide that they can coordinate with us for our mail out signings. And I wrote back, you know what? Um, so... <laughs> So he, uh, 
I said, listen, I, I'm an independent agent. I'd be happy to fill out the docs to become a vendor, a preferred vendor with your title company. Just give me the information I need so I can submit the paperwork. And crickets. And then uh, he's like, well, we really don't want to go back and forth with you, but due to the uh, increasing fraudulent climate, we're just going to use our uh, preferred national service. So I wrote back and said, listen, the client has the right to choose their own mobile notary. I hope you know that. It's their right. Number two, I'm uh, for what it's worth, I am air quote snap docs verified and I have my NNA certification attaches my ENO and my background check. Immediately I get back an email. Oh, well, snap docs is on our approved list. Okay. Thank you for this information. Now we will forward this information to our underwriters. I'm sure it's going to be okay now, but it wasn't like that until I mentioned that the client, oh, and I also added, I'll be sure to refer my clients to another title company. If I don't get assigned to this closing <laughs> after that, uh, they're like, oh, no, no, we'll, we'll, this, this may work, right? But I'm so livid that they're throwing this BS at me, mm -hmm. knowing that it's not their choice to choose the mobile notary, or is it? Am I wrong? I, Laura, do you want to start off? Do you want me to go? No, you can go ahead. I, you know what, Martha, I, I totally get it. I, I felt exactly what you're feeling before. And um, the truth is, the truth is, it is entirely up to the title company to decide if they want to go along with their customer's request mm -hmm. to use um, their their preferred mobile notary. It is not up to, I mean, the the, the their customer, the client, your your investor can say, hey, I want to use this person, but if they have their own corporate rules and restrictions, then they are going to default to that every company has a different process, right? And so you have to go along with what their process is. Now, I know it, it's, it's especially when this is like a coveted relationship that you have with this investor, and it seems like a no brainer that you should be able to work anywhere. But I want you to just think about it from their point of view, which I know might be difficult when you're feeling angry, but they're right. Fraud is a big deal right now. It's happening all over the place. And so they are protecting the, the um, integrity of that transaction because they don't know you from Adam. And they are feeling like they're trying to protect their client. What it tells me um, is this is a great opportunity for you to build a relationship with that title company. So instead of getting angry, and instead of, you know, because that's not going to solve anything for you, right? It's not going to solve anything for you. And you don't know the situation with the person, the escrow assistant that returned your call. Maybe she was brand new and had never heard of a, of a preferred mobile notary before. I can name tons of real estate agents that have never heard of preferred mobile notaries before. It's They've never even considered that. So it could just be ignorance on her part as well. But what it tells me is this is a great opportunity once once you kind of settle back in is to pick up the phone and have a conversation with this company and just let them know that, um, you know, you are interested in building a relationship with them because just like them, you care about this investor and you want to make sure if he uses them as their title company that you are set up and good to go in the future and um, did you say that they are located in Oregon? Yeah, the title company. Uh, actually, excuse me. Uh, the, um, I don't, where's my phone? Let me check the email there. One second, I'll tell you. Is, uh, well, here's here's my point. What I was going to say, um, it, Martha, is if you are able, like no, if they, if they, no, had, uh, the, I'm sorry, uh, the, the title company is located in Little Rock, Arkansas. Okay. All right. Let me tell you something about my experience with Arkansas. I live next door in Texas mm -hmm. and I've had a few title companies in Arkansas that I have had to work with. And um, the mobile notary concept to them is so completely foreign. You have to understand just like there's a difference between, you know, how Southerners and Northerners do things in life, right? Um, Southern title companies, especially um, this area 
they keep their closings really close to the vest. They don't want anybody else touching them. The idea of a mobile notary to them, you really got to work at it to make them understand. You happen to live in an area just like California where mobile notaries are everywhere, right? Everybody's used to, they know what it is. Every title company knows what it is, but you get out into little tiny Little Rock, Arkansas, and you're probably dealing with someone who is scared and more worried about fraud than they are with creating a relationship with you. And you have the power to change that just by calling them up and, you know, educating them a little bit on your relationship with this guy and how you can help them and him. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. Thank you. I and mean, I'm calmer now. <laughs> Good. Thank I'm you. glad because I do. I get it. It is infuriating. You're like, what the hell? I've proven myself, but not with that title company. And let me tell you, there is no greater distance in every, I mean, anything, but whether it's loans or law firms or anything than New York City and Little Rock, Arkansas. Things are just done differently in the South. Can I get my Southern folks to drop a one in the chat that have ever lived up North? <laughs> so raised hands here. Yeah, it is. It's just different. And so it's, it's something that you have to adapt to yeah. because ultimately they're the ones paying you. Understood. Thank you. You're welcome. Laura, did you have anything you wanted to add? I think you covered the part that I was going to put in, which is it's their choice. You can have a choice, but it's of their notaries or of their service that they've approved. So we have 15 notaries. Would you like to pick one from those 15? Not any notary, because I had it happen to me when I was doing my own rental properties and said, I'd like to use this certified person. They said, uh, you can use whoever you want. Here's the list that we use and you can choose amongst them. So I came upon that myself. But the rest of what Jen said, I would repeat. Yeah, absolutely. This is a golden opportunity for you to really develop a transformational relationship with them. And, you know, once everything, maybe wait till tomorrow and just make that phone call and have a conversation with them and build that relationship. Okay, we will do. Thank you. And let us know how it goes. I want to hear how it goes. Um, Ev, before we get to your call, and I know that um, um, Matt posted this as well. I'm going to let him post it just one more time. Um, his Matt, why don't you come on and tell us really quickly about what's going on on Thursday this week on the 7th? Thanks, Jen. Sure. Okay. So this Thursday, the 7th is the California League of Independent Notaries monthly roundtable. It is free to attend. I will post the link in the chat again where you can register for it. If you've already registered, don't worry about registering again. You'll get a reminder email on Thursday with the Zoom link. But this month, we're going to talk about uh, new bills and administrative rules that have been uh, introduced across the country. And while I, like, while I would love to talk about them all, I'm going to talk about a couple of trends going on right now. And one is involving deed fraud, which was briefly mentioned earlier. But it is, and I'm not being dramatic when I use the word rampant, and how some state legislatures are looking to address that, which will affect notaries in every single state. And also some other um, uh, legislative trends around the country, like um, receipt invoicing, uh, like mobile driver's licenses, and um, uh, altering documents, either adding or removing requirement for notarization and that sort of thing. Uh, and it, and how you can find out more about them and make your voice heard in your state on these policy decisions that affect you and your business. So please feel free to join us. It's going to be a very informative session, and uh, I'm going to post the link in the chat right now. Thank you so much, Jen. Yeah, thanks, Matt. And, you know, you don't have to be a California notary to be on this call. Matt talks about uh, legislation all across the country. So it is not California specific, like he said. So I highly encourage you um, to stay on top of what's going on and get involved if you if you so choose. Thank you, Matt, for sharing that. Ev, did you have another question for us? You thought of another question? I do. Awesome. What's that? <laughs> so here's the instruction. Borrower must always sign exactly as printed. If there is trustee verbiage, all verbiage should be signed as printed on the line. That's the instruction. So, 
as printed on the line, it says name individually and as trustee of the yada yada trust establishes. Do they need to write all that stuff out? And above the line, never under the line. Nothing can go under the signature line. They need to start at the top. So if they have to do, if it takes them three lines, they need to start above that signature line. Right, Laura? Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm trying to unmute, but I can't. <laughs> yeah, you hear me now? Okay, yeah. yes. Stack it. Sometimes it's two or three lines. They might need okay. an inch high. Okay, and then a quick add on to that the other instruction says if it says seal, which it does, they're supposed to put the date. And I've never seen that. I've never seen that. Never seal seen means that. signature. I yeah, and they're telling me if it says seal, put the date. All right. Well, if you've got an instruction to tell you to do that, then do it. Okay. That's it. Thank quick you. Tip, quick tip on that long signature, because I know that's a lot and, and you need to A a lot more time for this closing because it's going to take them longer to sign. And B, um, you need to um it helps if you create like a little table tent out of a folded piece of paper and you print out what they need to sign so they can look up. There's something about them being able to look up and seeing in front of them, this is my signature today. Um, and they can print, they don't have to like sign, they can print all of the verbiage as long as they sign mm -hmm. their name. So if you if you create like, it, it always just, it something that helps me a lot is just creating that little table tent. So they can look up and get through it. Because even gonna... when it's even when it's down below. Even when it's down below. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. All right, Michelle. Hey, Michelle. How are you? And I've always been good to see everyone. I've I've always been in um incognito mode and listening. But I have a question today. I've got a, a friend who is asking some things that are beyond um, my ability. And I, I know this is the right place to come to with this question. So I have someone who is wanting to purchase the home that they are living in um, here in Texas. The owner lives in Missouri, elderly, um, as an expired license. They live in Missouri and is homebound. So um, I've tried to do a little bit of research to see if a credible witness would be part of that. And the question is, can they get it done here or do they need to travel to Missouri in order to complete the transfer of that property with proper notarizations? How would they do that? So, well, I'm just trying to make sure I understand all the facts because you may have given me facts I don't need. And now I'm trying to juggle them all. Um, the bottom line is the signers are elderly and homebound. Did I understand that right? Correct. The With signers are in a different state, Missouri. Right. Okay. And so uh, uh, I would think a mobile notary in Missouri is what their answer would be to sign documents there because I don't believe Ron facilitates credible witnesses or some states do, some don't. Um, so first of all, you need to know is credible witness uh, for remote uh, work uh, because of that situation. Uh, and if the answer is no, then a mobile notary who goes out to them with the documents that have been overnighted to them to sign would be, because uh, then they could have a credible witness physically in the home. Okay. So is that what you're asking? Um, well, I tried to find out whether or not credible witness would be uh, acceptable in acceptable Missouri. to who? Acceptable for the notary? Uh, for the notarization process? Is that what you mean? For, okay. for, the, for, for the notarization for the, the elderly person right. homebound. And period. then have you, are you a member of the NNA where you have hotline access or do you have hotline access? Uh, and not at the moment. Because that's where I'd be going all day long when I've got these kind of questions, because that's what they're there for, is to answer straight up questions that you find right in the handbooks. Okay. Um, that's what they know how to do. I'm not going to know that off the top of my head. Okay. If in Missouri, they can have credible witnesses. There are states where they only allow one, which makes it difficult. 
It means the notary has to know that witness. And it makes it very complicated. And I don't know how it works in Missouri off the top. Already, I appreciate the feedback. But if you don't have hotline, Michelle, did you know that the NNA will do a complimentary call? If you call them, they will do one complimentary call and do the service for you. Okay. As a, you know, good faith to show you what it's like to do that. Perfect. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And Michelle, I just wanted to add one thing very quickly. Um, I think that um, this is a, a lender package that you're signing. They're buying a house in Texas. Um, the the person who is already living in the house has okay. been renting it and now wishes to purchase it from the owner who has moved from Texas to Missouri. Okay. So is there a lender involved here? I don't think so, but I don't know. Okay. Because you would also need to run it by the lender uh, if there was one. And um, somebody else put in the chat too that calling the Secretary of State in Missouri might be helpful as well. This just came up this morning and, and you guys came up before my ability to, <laughs> to make that call. So it is on my list. I appreciate okay. it. Michelle, there, there's some answers posted in the chat you might want to look at as well. Looks Great. like us. Okay. Awesome. All Thanks, right. Michelle. Great question. I love hearing, Laura, that we're getting more questions about houses and home sales and things. That tells me that, you know, spring buying season is right upon us. That's exciting. Thanks, Michelle. Thank yeah. you. Hey, Kristen. Hey, all. How's everyone doing? Hey. Um, I don't really have a question per se. I just wanted to share with everybody, um, as most of you guys all know, that this is such an invaluable call, not only Tuesday Notary Titans, but having Laura, Matt, and Jen as uh, mentors to all of us are uh, is amazing. I just want to give them each a shout out. They all recently helped me um, with a lot of interesting uh, things lately regarding a Mylar a subdivision map, which uh, Matt is still going around and around, believe it or not. I don't need to get into all the details, but uh, looking like a third version to go. Um, just wanted to let um, share that uh, Jen helped me with um, some marketing um, feedback. I had to do, uh, I did a presentation this morning uh, for about 25 agents that went on a Zoom sharing how uh, a notary can be invaluable to them. Uh, but anyhow, I just want to thank each and every one of you for helping me continue to grow my business, uh, stay positive and super supportive. Thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Kristen. That's so sweet. We, um, uh, I'm so proud of you for doing what you did um, on that uh, presentation today. You got such a good response. And honestly, you know what? This is one of those amazing things that comes with Notary Business Builder membership. You get direct access to me and Bill and Laura. So um, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. I'm going to put a link for those You're of you welcome. that want to look into NBB. The link is now in the chat for you to take a look at. Yeah, and I have one last thing to say as a notary ambassador. If you're if you're a notary and you're on this call get your membership. It's so invaluable. I mean, I can't tell you guys how many times there's, there's days I call three, four times, even though I'm a notary for 20 years, I still get stumped. I do so much stuff out of state, Hawaii, Texas, um, uh, uh, Georgia, the weird States, you know, you can't keep up with all their strange notarial language. So um, the hotline is always there. They're supportive. You can email them, you can call them and guess what else they'll do. If you call them and let's just say, Hey, I don't understand credible witness or signature by Mark. Do you know what they'll do? They will email you step-by-step -step exactly how to do it. It's unbelievable. And yes, we have our handbook too, but sometimes they provide a little extra information. So always know that's a super invaluable resource to all of you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. Um, this, uh, I just posted a link for you guys in um, the chat um, uh, for Notary Business Builder and everybody knows how to get to the NNA, right? I think it's nationalnotary.org, right, Laura? 
nationalnotary.org. Well, that's our website. Um, actually, uh, there might be an extension to that for hotline. I'm sure there is, but I don't keep that in my head either. Um, it's definitely worth membership, you guys. It absolutely is is worth the membership for all the reasons that Kristen and Laura said, and and just you know, I I've, I've called that hotline. I can't even tell you how many times. I want to share something with you really quick before we get to Glenn's question about what's happening recently inside Notary Business Builder. This is really cool. I'm going to actually share my screen with you for a minute. We. Um, have started a new website called the NBB Spotlight. It's nbbspotlight.com. And you can see here, we are featuring people that are part of Notary Business Builders that have classes, courses, products, things that we um, uh, endorse and things that we think that you need to know about. This is this is for all things notary related or otherwise. You'll see here, Nancy has sells something called magnetic mantras. And then we've got a notary planner. We've got some notary swag, but we encourage you guys to please go check this out. Um, if you would like to uh, be a part of selling a product that maybe you created a new journal, or maybe you've got some t-shirts um, that you sell and you would like to leverage our email list to talk about that. We are no longer allowing people to just randomly post their products and services in the TNT chat. We will be pulling things that we talk about um, that benefit the notary community as long as they are approved here on the Innovator Spotlight. So I'd love for you guys to go um, check that out after the call. And I'm going to um, post the link in there for you if you want to learn more about it. Thank you for your patience, Glenn. What is your question today? Hi, can you hear me? Hey. Hey. Okay, so my question, I'm from New Jersey. And my question is, I have a, a customer. I've done a couple of uh, signings for her and her mom, actually. So her mom, well, actually, she lost the... I done a power of attorney for her. She lost the power of attorney. And in the beginning stages, her, her mom, her mom was okay, but she was developing dementia. So uh now I I'm almost sure she's in full blown dementia. And the her daughter went to the bank and did uh, said can uh she showed the power of attorney or something, something to the fact that she, anyway, she don't have the power of attorney. She wants me to do another one. Um, how can I go about that? Or can I go about that? Well, I think Glenn, that certainly you don't know unless you've spoken to her directly, whether or not her disease has progressed to the point that she's not alert and aware. Glenn, what is your okay. state? New Jersey. All right, so I don't believe New Jersey is one of them. Some states actually have rules for notary in terms of competency, but most states will not have a statute addressing it. And what they say, best practice is alert and aware, which means you need to go to her and see if she's oriented. And the or I use the rule of oriented times four, which is what they use in the hospitals. So does she know who she is? Does she know where she is? Does she know... Um, uh, why or uh, what she's signing, you know, power of attorney so her daughter can actually do banking for yeah. her. And then mm -hmm. finally, the relationship, relational. Does she know who she is in relation to, say, the daughter? Is she going to say that's the daughter or that's the housekeeper or that's the mm -hmm. who knows what? So those are the four questions that I typically ask rather than worrying about what their diagnosis is because they may or may not still have um, enough capacity to sign. Um, it's not about what their diagnosis is because we're not attorneys and we're not medical staff. Right. That's my recommendation okay. I would have to go to the appointment to see if she's able. Now, if the daughter admits, hey, she didn't know who she is anymore. All right, now we already know. She's not going to be oriented even times one. And therefore, 
I can't do it. And then you could not do it. Right. All right. All right. Okay. That's that's my question. Thank you. Great question, Glenn. Thank you for bringing that up. Laura, our questions are over. I know. Gosh. We still have 20 minutes or more left. I think. Um, who your... else has a question for us? Go ahead and raise your hand. And Laura, in the meantime, tell us about your Saturday call, because I know you have lots of people that want to get in and work directly with the one and only goat herself, Laura Bewer. So guys, listen, if you, if some of you are like, God, I'd like to be coached by you. I want to work with you. Will you mentor me? There's a point of entry for you and it's free. And that point of entry is on Saturday mornings. It's called Laura's Inner Circle. And it's an opportunity for you to be on a call very similar to this, just a little smaller than this, where we talk about questions or topics in a little more in depth uh, than we have the time to do here. Um, so that is uh, go to coachmelaura.com where it says Laura's Inner Circle. Leave me your email to sign up. You'll get a Zoom link and hold on to it because I don't change it. And then you're welcome um, to join on any Saturday morning from 8 to 9 a.m. Pacific time. Matt also joins me on that call almost every Saturday as well. So just another opportunity, either if you can't come to a TNT because it's on a Tuesday and you have appointments, or you just like to see how, it would, you know, what it would be to have more personalized kinds of coaching with me, there's your opportunity. Love it. Thank you, Laura. Teresa in South Carolina, what is your question for us today? Hello, everyone. This is Teresa Higgs from South Carolina. And I have a couple questions. One is, um, uh, the young lady, uh, the, the gentleman Glenn was talking about a POA. I had a, um, well, I guess the, the clients had a do-it-yourself POA. They filled it out themselves and everything. Um, but the one of the the persons that the giver had on the POA and it was also a, a I think it was a medical POA and a power of a, a durable POA. He only, only one of the people that he had on there were there at the moment. So the other person that he had on there would have would need to sign at a later date. Is it still okay to sign for him or with him? Let him go ahead and sign everything since he's the one who's giving everything uh, giving someone else the power of attorney. So the person whose signature you're notarizing is the person giving mm -hmm. permission. Um, yes. Frequently, I will see an opportunity after their signature for the agent to sign to either acknowledge or accept the appointment. And that signature is not notarized and does not okay. have to happen in front of you. Okay. Okay. That's what I needed to make sure because I did not think that it needed to be just as long as his was notarized. Um, and the other uh, thing, I have my first um, apostille Great. facilitation tomorrow. Congratulations. And <laughs> don't say that yet, because I don't know. <laughs> you I think I'm not, it is just one document. Um, I just need to make sure that I'm doing everything that needs to be done um, correctly because she's lost. I'm um, finding my way. Um, I guess, is there anyone that I can, I know that Judy offers um, help or whatever, but I just want to make sure it's someone I can get with this evening or whatever where I can kind of go over because she sent me everything that needs to be done. I just need to make sure I do it correctly. <laughs> well, I, I mean, two things. One is if you're going to be doing apostille work, do you have the book? The apostille guide? No. Okay, so that's not for tonight necessarily. But if you're going to do this kind of work, people, make sure you have the right resources to help you. Um, okay. And if uh, Matt, you could put the link. Matt and Judy co-wrote that together. Um, okay. That is something you should have in your back pocket so that you would have something to help you with this and feel more confident about what you're doing. For 
for today. Um, I don't know if Matt, if you're available to help her or not um, with her questions, but that would be my only, I don't want to throw Matt under the bus. Sure. I mean, we can, we can address them here if they're brief, or you can give me a call later today. I'll put my number in the chat. I am, I do have appointments all afternoon. So if I miss you, I'll call you back. Do you have a brief question um, and a lengthy discussion? Uh, I'm actually on the road, so I can't really get into it right now. Um, I would appreciate later this evening at your convenience um, if we could. All right. I yeah. need right. the screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he put his number. And remember, you're three hours ahead of us. So, you know, eight or nine exactly. times only six our time. Yes. Yes. Okay. I and get that book, Teresa. You're gonna. It's gonna. It's really gonna save you all of this yes. wondering because they walk you through literally step by step by step. So it's it's a, it's a great book. So make sure that you you get that for your next appointments. I definitely will. I I have not been on in a while. They I have been trying to stay busy, so I have been missing calls. So I did not know about the book, but I am so happy that there is one. There yeah. is on it's on Amazon, right, Matt? On Amazon. Yes. Uh, All right. Did yeah, you and put it on the there the whole name, agent, uh, apostille agent, agent survivor, survivor guide. guide, and that is the link to the book on uh, Amazon. And there's a I'm link about to pull over so I can get it all. And get there you go. <laughs> awesome, Teresa. You know, good I, I'm good glad, luck with everything. I'm sorry. I, I'm glad Thanks. to ask the question on the call because there's other people, other notaries who might want to do this kind of work. And maybe they're held back because they're, they're just too nervous. They're not quite sure. And if there's a resource to help you, an inexpensive resource like that, get it. And that way, when you're prepared to say yes, that's the thing is, you know, I hear people, well, I got asked to do this, but I wasn't ready. I wasn't sure. And they ended up passing up an opportunity. Be ready for yes. That's awesome. Great Thank advice, you. Laura. <laughs> that is great advice, Laura. Thank you for sharing that. All right. Who is our next caller? It's, I keep saying caller, like we actually are on the radio. Faith, what's your, what's your question? Hello, everyone. My question is about the, um, the spotlight i missed it uh innovator it, spotlight yeah yeah so does this have to does it have to be all notary related nope okay. no nope. the only have to um that is required is that you have to be a member of notary business builder okay uh, because we leverage our our huge email um list Bill, Laura, and myself, and we make sure that everybody on that email list hears about your product. We also leverage our social media and advertise your product on social media. Um, we also, Bill will do an interview with you when his profile's in ink, and that will be sent out via email. Um, we, you know, throughout the year, we'll be sending you uh, or sending out um, different things about your business. And so that's the only requirement is that you are a notary business builder. And Faith, if you have an Italian cooking class that you offer, or you've got, you know, you're like Ev and you knit and, and you're knitting scarves and you want to sell it on Innovator Spotlight, go for it. Notaries are so much more than, than just people with stamps, right? Like we have all kinds of creative pursuits and we want to show that off. Okay. My next question is, I remember last week you all were talking about, um, having to be a member of L, wait, Laura, wait, LBP. What uh -huh. was that about? Well, Laura? Uh, so about LBP? Yeah, Laura Bewer Presents is a video replay library. Right now there's about 12 different videos and they're on different mm -hmm. specialties. No, I have it. I have okay. it. I just remember uh, something you all were talking about, the, the spotlight deal, I think. Well, not the spotlight, but I did have a special call for HOA elections. Okay. That was last okay. week, but because it was live, but it was recorded and it's now in the LBP library. So if you missed it, you can go there and watch it. Oh, that and I had an attorney great. join me to help with the presentation. It's okay, a great call. Great. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And I just want to um, address something that came to me privately in the chat. Yes. If you are an author and you have a book out, we want you on Innovator Spotlight, Matt Miller. And if you have a class, we want you on Innovator Spotlight, Lisa Duppy. And we want you guys to show off your talents and your journals and all notary related things, but also the things you do that um, might not be notary related. You know, we, we are, we are much more creative than just people that stamp documents, right, Laura? <laughs> All right. Hey, Lorraine, what's your question? Hi there. Yes, I'm back. Hey, good to uh, see yes. you. Yeah, good to see you too. Um, in Oregon, we have a um, advanced directive where it says either A, you have witnesses or B. B, you have it notarized. So that's fine. No issues with that. And I think I know the answer to this other one, but I had an, um, another Oregon durable financial power of attorney. And it did have signature lines for two witnesses. So this was over at the hospital. And the social worker arranged for this appointment. Um, so I get there and, and I had asked her, are witnesses needed? And she said, no get there, it has two lines, signature lines for witnesses. And then of course, then the acceptance by the, um, by the agent. And she and the agent were absolutely um, sure that witnesses, even though there's witness lines are not necessary, that it's either or. And I'm thinking that if there are witness lines, then there should be witnesses. So and I realize it's not. Real, it's not my place to, you know, yeah. tell them. But yeah, so you've got a couple of different answers here. First of all, document portion not our deal, right? right? Although completeness is. So if they're not going to have them, then they can put lines through it, so it wasn't okay. utilized, and that way nobody's adding stuff after the fact. Second mm -hmm. thing is about financial powers of attorney. They may or may not require witnesses. Um, uh, it depends on the state and what their either probate law, or whatever the statutes state. So okay. for instance, sometimes a power of attorney can just be witnessed by two witnesses if there's no mm -hmm. real estate, if there's no real estate involved. If there is real estate uh, involved, then it must be notarized. And so you're gonna okay. see lots of versions of power uh -huh. of attorney out there. And some of them have both witnesses and notarization and some right. just have notarization and uh, mm -hmm. just fine. But it's not our place to tell them they've got the right or wrong version and whether or right. not the witnesses, if there's witness lines there, it could have been they just happened to pick a ver that version that had it, even though they might not have needed or wanted it. And it's uh -huh. up to them to decide if they're mm -hmm. going to strike it or if they're going to go ahead and get witnesses. Okay, so so that's not a problem. Yeah, we I, I made a note in my journal that there were witness lines and they left it blank. Um, I wouldn't have left them blank. I yeah. would have made them put in yeah. slash A or none. Right. Yeah. That would have been the more appropriate thing. Uh huh. But, but yeah, I was just they curious. could have a power of attorney that doesn't have witnesses on it. And it's not my deal to not mm -hmm. notarize because of that. Right. Right. I went ahead and notarized. I was just yeah. concerned. And of course, I, you know, questioned them about it, you know, about right. the witnesses. And they said, no, no, no. They didn't want the witnesses. And so. I didn't know if there was an issue or not because there are witness lines. Right. I have notarized mm -hmm. powers of a financial powers of attorney here in California that had witness areas. Uh, uh -huh. It was not uh, that witnesses were not needed. It okay. The notarization. Now it's not our place to tell them. Right. Which, but just know mm -hmm. it's. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. Thank you. Alrighty. Thanks, Lorraine. Thanks. Thank you. Daniela, what is your question for us? Um, I have two questions. <clears throat> um, did I I thought the notary assist um uh membership, did that does that come with um my NBB membership? It sure does. I wasn't able to find where I could um create a profile. Sure. Just Daniela, all you have to do is go into your notary business builder dashboard mm -hmm. and open up you know, where it says start here, open that up and scroll down until you see course and product inclusions. It's the second 
white section. Uh, there's like a top white section and a bottom white section. It's the second one. And just keep scrolling down through that until you see notary assist. If okay. you get to the end of the page and you don't see it, you need to click on the show more button <laughs> and that'll allow the page to open up longer. Okay, good. And yeah. my second question, thank you for that. Um, You're welcome. And my second question was, um, Laura, for the class on Saturday, you said you had to sign up. Where, where did you provide the link in the chat? I wasn't able no. to catch that if you did. Yeah, there's no link here. You have to go to my website, coachmelaura.com. And there's a place that says Laura's inner circle. And that's where you'll leave your email for me. Then I will email you the link directly. Okay. So coachmelaura.com. And Is Matt that, just put yeah. the link in the chat for you, Daniela. Okay, perfect. Thank awesome. you. Thank you. All right, guys. So we're getting ready to wrap it up here in a few minutes. I just want to say one quick thing. If you are, let's say, a newer notary and you are thinking to yourself right now, man, I am not getting the kind of business that I know I can get. I really want to be a successful notary entrepreneur, but I need some business. How am I going to get that? I hear about all these groups like Notary Business Builder and, and Notary Stars and all these different groups out there. I just don't know if I have the money to invest in that yet. Guess what? I have a website I want you to go check out. It's called Marketing for Notaries. I'm going to put it in the chat right now. Um, this is a five-step program. I teach you a framework for how to get out and start marketing your business. Because if you haven't realized it yet, just like you have to be your own bookkeeper, like Daniela was talking about with Notary Assist, and you have to be the practitioner and know how to notarize things and, and educate yourself beyond what your state allows, like coming to this call, you also have to be the director of marketing. Nobody is going to spread the word about your business the way you can. So if you're interested in getting a framework that you can just pick up and put in your business, go check out marketingfornotaries.com. Thank you for the compliment, Carol. Um, in the chat. I appreciate that. Um, go give it a, go give it a check out guys. It's only 20 bucks a month until May 17th. So prices going up May 17th. I've kept it up at 20 for as long as I can. Um, so if you're interested in finding a marketing plan, I would love to work with you. And that comes with free 25 minute calls for me each week. Uh, if you so choose. Um, do we have any other announcements, Laura or Matt, before we wrap up? Because I don't see any other questions. Let's do one last call for questions. Laura, do you have anything else? Uh, let me just think about what's happening this month. Oh, so remember that um, aren't we on a travel day on Tuesday? The Oh, Saturday? great. Yeah, th thank you for that, Laura. I, I was so going to put that on back. next week on the calendar, but week, yes. I think we're on in the week after Tuesday, March 19th, there will be no TNT call. Um, Bill and Laura and I are traveling that day. So we are going to be dark just on March 19th. Um, and then uh, not again until May when we are at the NNA conference. Um, so if you are um, a regular attendee, mark your calendar. We'll, of course, send an update that day so you don't forget. We don't want to waste your time. We know how valuable it is. So um, thank you, guys. I don't see any hands up. So we're going to wrap up a few minutes wrap early. Up. All yeah. right, guys. Thank you for your time today, for your awesome questions, um, for being the brave ones to ask the questions. We appreciate it so much. And we look forward to seeing you next week on Tuesday Notary Titans. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye.